everybody! Welcome to, I think it's episode 13 of the Hello Grace podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Stevens, and um, I'm coming to you from Spokane, Washington. It's where I live and I work and I raise my family and I do all of the things crafty. I am the owner and, um, I guess, designer behind Graceland Wool. And you can find me on, let's see, on Ravelry as Sarah Stevens and on Instagram as Graceland underscore wool. And here and there, I've been doing Periscope. I've been really intimidated by trying the Instagram stories. I don't know why, but I want to try one of those pretty soon. I don't know. I would love your feedback on that. Um, have you tried it? Do you love it? Is it really hard to use? I see everybody else's and I'm uber jealous. I don't know how they can make all the different clips throughout the day and then make them all go. So anyways. Okay, I'm drinking some iced tea in my mug. Um, it's just too dang hot. I have a second mug here for when it cools down a little bit. I have some good earth in here, but it's just too hot right now. I think it's it was 97 degrees like around 3 o'clock this afternoon on the soccer field and I didn't turn the air conditioning on at all and so my house is roasting. So uh, you'll notice I'm in a different location. This I think is going to be my permanent spot until it starts to get darker outside earlier. We'll see. Um, I think that the colors are pretty good. It's not the best background in the world. Uh, you can see my fireplace mantle and pictures of my kiddos, which I love, but it's not uh, yummy yarn or scenic outside by any means. So anyways, I guess we can jump on into the show. Today's show, I've got um, three FOs. I've got some works in progress and some planning and then a little bit of acquisitions as well. So um, hopefully you enjoy. If not, um, you know, there are 9 million podcasters out there. I'm sure you'll find one that you enjoy. And yeah, so I guess we'll get started. I have to pause really briefly. I've never done this before, but my dog needs to go outside. So just, just one second. Okay, we're unpaused. I hope that works out well. I don't know how flawless that'll be. Um, I've never tried that function before. So anyways, we will start uh, with FOs first and go from there. This was my first FO over the course of the last three weeks and I absolutely adore it. It was the fastest knit in the world. I think it's just what I needed at that moment. I ordered some Quince & Co. Owl in the Cielo colorway. It's C-I-E-L-O. It's this beautiful heathery blue and it is amazing. It is 100% um, wool. No, I lie. It's wool and an, an alpaca. Maybe it's a 70-30. Oh, shoot, I should have taken notes on that. It's in a wool alpaca blend. So you can see this halo kind of maybe. Can you see it? Over this. If you hear noise in the background, I'm really sorry. Um, the water is now running. So anyways, this is the cowl. I uh, absolutely adore it. Um, it's like the perfect cowl to go underneath of your winter coat. Um, I love it. This pattern is the gray, what is it? Gray Haven Cowl by Robin Ulrich. I knit this with the recommended needles, uh, needle size. I didn't fudge it at all this time. And I used my Haya Haya Sharp Circulars. I don't remember what needle size it was though. I apologize. Um, I love the pattern. I think it's perfect. I see many more of these in my future. So that is uh, FO number one. Mm. 
I entered it into Diane of Suburban Stitchers around your neck cowl, but I don't I don't know if it'll really technically count because it was only like 200 yards. It, it was a little shy of 200 yards. In fact, this is what I have left of the two skeins. So this is what's left of two skeins. They are only 50 gram skeins. So awesome. Super awesome. Super awesome knit. Uh, highly recommend that. Uh, the next FO that I got on my new sock blockers, <laughs> um, I, I have always wanted these sock blockers, um, always, always, and every single time I went to go order some of these, um, they were always out of my size, and so I never got a chance to get a pair and you have to buy them single, singly, singularly, singly. So anyways, this is them. They're super cute. I got them from the Loopy U. And on them are my little bird socks. It is a pattern that I just released. And it has three of these lace sections that run up the sock. There's three of them on the top and um, each of one, each of them represent one of my kiddos. So one of my little birds. <laughs> you can kind of see it. It's a shorty sock but you can easily uh, remedy that and make it a longer sock if you'd want to. I knit these cuffed down um, with my um, Knitter's Pride Carbons DPNs. I use a 2.0 millimeter needle, but the pattern is recommended for a one and a half US needle. And it's just because I, I love my socks on a 2.0 and I get, I get the same gauge as what typically people get on a one and a half. So, it's my preferred needle of choice for my socks and I cannot wait. These aren't blocked. I did not block them and um, I love it. This is my yarn. This was one of those tester skeins that I wasn't too sure if I would love the colorway. I do. I think I might want to try and recreate this one. I think this is a perfect, perfect colorway. So, oops. Um, that is... Um, FO number two. This pattern is available on Ravelry um, if you would like to make these. So FO number two. And then my third FO, because I was super busy in these last couple weeks. I had intended to podcast last week, but then I had some oral surgery that I had to do and or take care of anyways, and I did not feel up to podcasting last weekend. So it had to wait until now, but I'm happy it did because a few things have come in and I have a chance to show you all of the fun things that I'm working on and that I finished. So last FO, I finally finished them. These have been on the needles for so long. These are the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern um, by Erica Luter. These I knit uh, cuffed down with my um, Knitter's Pride Carbons. I did, I think the pattern exactly how it called for. I think I may have done a different heel. I just did the standard heel that I normally do. And I think I made a bigger cuff than what is recommended. I think I did a two by two ribbing instead of like a twisted ribbing or maybe it's a three by one. I'm not sure. But I think I did the, the cuff different than what the pattern calls for. But this is such a fun, textured, simple potato chippy knit. I don't know why it took me so long to get it done, but I love these socks. They're going in my box of socks. And I cannot wait until January because that is when I'm going to allow myself to uh, look at all of my pretty socks and be able to put them on. So I'm just kind of 
housing them. Actually, they're not even at a box right now. I need to get a fun box. I don't have one, but um, they're in my bench. I have a storage bench in my living room that kind of has all of my works in progress, things like that. And uh, they're just hanging out in my bench until I find a really good spot for them. So, which is okay by me. Um, the yarn is Graceland Wool Yarn. This is the After the Storm colorway. It will be available in the shop again in April. It's meant to be representing um, after a really big storm, the rainbow always comes out. So light blue skies and little speckles to represent the rainbow. I love this colorway. I dyed this for Diane of Suburban Stitchers um, Rainbow Long uh, a couple years ago. I got to be a part of that so um, yeah I love it so that is my fo number three that is the last thing that I have finished I feel like it is a lot to have finished it's not the things that I wanted to finish if you guys will remember if you've been watching a little while those socks the Hermione's everyday socks were not meant to get finished yet um, they were number four on my list I was supposed to finish a lot of other things before that, including my daughter's little boxy, which I haven't even touched since I told you it would only take me a week to finish the rest of it. Haven't touched it. I did, however, cast on uh, two more sweaters and order a sweater's quantity of yarn that it should be here this week, but I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. So... What do we want to talk about first? Let's talk about the sweater that I first started. I started this sweater just a few nights ago. In fact, I started it on Friday. Today is Sunday, um, August 27th, and I started it on Friday. I worked on the collar when I was at work, and then I actually went to my friend's house and picked up a... Um, some size for needles and uh, because I had completely forgotten about packing size for needles you start out with a smaller needle uh, for the the, the uh, collar and then you increase to a larger needle and I didn't pack that size so she luckily had some and I ran to her house and picked it up picked them up she gave me two so that way I could cast, uh, not cast on, but I could get going into the body of this sweater. Super excited. Um, so I had two hours at soccer practice to just kind of really dive into it. I got all of the shaping done on the back of the sweater before you officially start like the color work section. When I got home, I started the color work section and I was so excited I don't think I, well, I know I didn't truthfully look at the chart. I just went. And I'll explain what I'm talking about later, but oops. Okay, I am making the Sunset Highway sweater. Um, can't, I hope you guys can see that. Like everybody is making this sweater. I think everyone is making this sweater right now, but that's okay. I don't typically have the opportunity to jump on the knit along bandwagon um, because I usually don't have everything, but because this sweater is a lot like the Find Your Fades or um, the What the Fade, it uses so much um, single skeins of yarn, so many ske single skeins of yarn, of indie yarn, that I, I have that in my stash so anyways okay here we go oh I'm losing some stitches so what I was talking about ah, okay here we are is I just went ahead and started now I got quite a ways um, Here's the front. 
you can see that. Okay, here's the here's the front, and here's the back. You can see how it's the back is taller, right? Now, the color work section is beautiful. I absolutely adore it. I'm using my Moonstone colorway right now and my Liquid Soul, and I'm just to the point where I'm going to start adding my pink, and I'm going to be using Olivia. And I went ahead and skeined, which is also a Graceland wool yarn. I, I uh, balled up Olivia, and I'm going to be adding this in. And it's just a paler pink. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's going to go wonderfully together. However, if you will notice on this sweater where the dark, the dark sections are, um, they are different than the dark sections on mine. I don't know if you can see that. See how inside, inside these little teardrop things, the very middle is the light color. Yeah, mine's not, I reversed it. It's the tear, it's the darker color. So really this liquid soul color should be the gray, my moonstone colorway. And down here, these lines here and this middle section should actually be the liquid soul. I woke up on Saturday morning and picked this guy up and I went to go start working on it again. I had a cup of coffee and I sat down and it was quiet. I woke up early so that way I could work on it before anybody else woke up and I was getting ready to start this teardrop section right here, like start adding in the gray. I looked at my chart and I looked down at my work. I looked at the chart and then I went, oh shit. But you know what, you guys, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I don't think it's going to be a big deal at all. Look at this though. I do. I am pretty dang proud of my floats. They're not amazing. They're not amazing. Um, I've never in my life knit a sweater that had any sort of color work and my floats are pretty cool and I'm loving it. Some of them stretch really far out. It has to go across so many stitches. And um, I think I'm going to have to use the crochet hook, you know, and pick them all up and catch them uh, towards the end to really secure them. I love this sweater. I will not work on this sweater again, probably until maybe tonight. <laughs> Looks so funny like that. Uh, until probably tonight. I really want to get that pink section done. Uh, but we'll see. It might it might actually kind of hang out until tomorrow night. But you can see my three colors that I have going on. So the pink I'm adding in next. And then did I bring them over? Oh, I didn't. So then the main color is actually going to be a light speckly pink um, from Wool and Boon. And then an even lighter speckle from Graceland Wool. And I'm just going to stripe the two of those kind of to, to really soften the, the, the bottom, the main color, but to still tie in with the Olivia color, the pink. So, it's so hot in my house right now. I, I'm turning red. Okay. Whew. Anyways, so, oh, and I'm housing that project in my sweet pink rusted stitch bag. If I hold it back here, I feel like it's getting blown out. I don't know. It is a knit, almost like polka dot, light pink, and then the inside has arrows. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So you can find Rusted Stitch on Etsy, and you will not be disappointed. Um, I have two of her larger bags, and these are my favorite sweater bags. Um, I have three. No, I have four sweater bags. I have one Amy Beth bag that is ginormous. It is the one that if I ever decide to make myself like a bulky weight sweater, 
that is going to be the one that I need to be using. And then I have a Mrs. Brown's bag, um, Parisian girl on a bicycle, pale blue, and that one is perfect. I actually am holding a pretty big shawl in it right now that I'm not going to show you today. Um, and then Caitlin's little boxy is in my gold, sparkly, rusted stitch, and this one is in my pink. So I love, I have a bag issue. Um, anyways, okay, so because we're on the topic of sweaters, I have one more sweater that I'm going to show you that I'm working on, and I just started it this morning. I started going through my stash um, again and reorganizing everything. Um, my house is kind of here. You can see. Maybe you can see. See over here? I have books and I have some of my yarn out that I kind of go through all of the time. Okay. So I started going through all of that. And kind of reorganizing it, pulling out some stuff that I just wasn't going to use anymore or um, I just couldn't use anymore. And I came across three sweater quantities, um, mostly for that I could turn into sweater quantities for my daughter and then for my oldest daughter. And then in addition to that, I found a couple that were big enough for Caitlin sweater quantities and and even um, baby sweaters. So I thought, I have, I'm knitting through this. I don't understand why I haven't done that yet. So without further ado, I cast on to the, oh shoot, I didn't write it down. It's the oatmeal pullover. Do I have it on here? I mean to have everything out and ready for you every single time that I do this, and I just fail. Um, where's my downloads? I'm going to pull it up right now. It's the Oatmeal Pullover by Jane Richmond. And let's see if you can even see this. It is this sweater super cute super simple and it's in bulky and I have excuse me nine skeins of bulky weight yarn in this green colorway that my daughter will not wear but once I get this done I'm going to over dye it in a like a bright blue so it'll be more like teal and black and she will freak out over it. So I started, which you can't tell, because even though my lighting is pretty good right now, this green, it's just too, um, it's too dark. So I um, cast on to a little bit larger than her size. I wanted to make it like an over, more of a slouchy, oversized sweater that she could just curl up in and keep her cozy in the winter and I got through the separation of the sleeves and now I'm working on the body and this has all been done this afternoon at today's soccer so I plan to have this done uh, knock on wood knock on wood soon sooner than later will it be done before school starts probably not but will it be done before Christmas that is my plan. So that has been cast on. And before I can cast on another sweater, this one has to be done, or my Sunset Highway has to be done, or that little boxy has to be done. And I purchased enough yarn to make a, um, a Rock Creek. And it is by doesn't have her name on here but it is by also by Caitlin Hunter and it is so cute it actually uses worsted weight yarn although I bought DK and here we go I'll show you a picture of the pattern there is texture on the front half of the sweater and then the sleeves are just in stockinette 
And if it shows a picture, I don't know if I printed a picture, but the back is a little bit, nope. The back is like a little bit longer scooped than the front. So I think it's gonna be beautiful. I purchased some Madeline Tosh yarn that I have never used before. It's called like their farmhouse twist, I think and in the uh, Merida colorway. It should be here next week. So the next time that I film, you guys will get to see it. And I am so excited about it. I think it's going to be the year of the sweaters for me. I know that everybody has been talking about it. I know that everybody's in the same mindset, I think. And um, it's kind of all about the sweaters and the socks for me right now. Okay, I only have two more things to really talk about that I'm working on. Um, well, one more thing and then also acquisition. So the last thing that I'm working on is a pair of socks. And I'm almost done with the leg. This is in my Lucy's Embroidery colorway, and I love this colorway. I, I got the other one done. I left my other one in the bench. Here, I'm going to pause. I'm going to go grab it. Okay, I'm back. So, I totally botched that in a way. If you all are knitting the mystery sock that I put up and the pictures are coming out in like four days. So what if you still don't want to see what it looks like? I just completely ruined that for you. Uh, but I'm going to show you the full completed sock. So don't look, I guess, if this is something that you are not wanting to know about, but I did finish the one and it's imperative that I get the second one done because these are the ones that I want to go in the picture not the other pair. I want this one to go. I think that this will make the most beautiful pattern picture ever. But this is my Lucy's embroidery colorway. And I love this colorway so very much. Um, gosh, so much. I love these socks. It's so much fun. My dear friend uh, Tech edited the pattern for me, which makes it so much better and she's probably one of the best tech editors I've ever come across and I'm not just saying that but she's amazing and I can't wait um, ugh, anyways anyways tangent so I'm almost done with the leg of my second sock and the plan is to get this sock done this week so I can take pictures and get the um, the final pattern pictures up for you guys on the first of September like I had told you all I would. So I'm working on those. I'm using my Knitter's Pride Carbons, um, 2.0 millimeter DPNs, and I'm housing these socks in my brand new bag. I contacted Diane and I said, do you happen to have any of those bags left? The sweet pink arrow bags that are the drawstring. And she had one and she so kindly said I would totally um, sell that to you. So I got this. I love this bag. I love my zipper bags, but I do love my, um, my drawstring bags as well. And I think I've talked about it before. There are just a handful of makers, bag makers specifically, that I, I love. And I'm sure that there are many more out there. I just haven't tried them, but Diane's are one of my favorites. So the outside is this sweet um, arrow fabric and the inside, I don't know if you can see it, is pink polka dots. And you all know me, or if you all know me, then you know I love polka dots. So that is a new acquisition for me as well. Okay, and then, the last thing, I feel like I'm surrounded by stuff, is 
one of my sweet friends, Dana of Unwind Yarn Company, um, posted a Instagram post saying, you know, please, here's a coupon code. And I couldn't resist any longer. Um, I don't know how I do it most of the time. Her yarn is beautiful. So I ordered one skein on her Twinkle Sock Base. Okay, y'all. It is amazing. It is a 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% Stellina, and it is the gold Stellina that I love. It's just beautiful. So this is my September 1st cast on for socks. That is the other reason why I need to have the other sock completely done because this is going to become my fall socks. I don't know if I'm going to make another one of my sock patterns or if I'm going to make um, a pair of Mercury socks. I haven't decided. Once I get the toe, not the toe, once I get the cuff done, then I'll kind of make my final judgment call there. But go run, check out her shop. It's unwindyarncompany.com. I don't know if you can see that. Unwindyarncompany.com. She is amazing an amazing dyer this one's called a good place you cannot go wrong so go check her out you will love it okay that's all i'm working on um as for the ravelry group i did want to talk to you guys a little bit about that uh, for a few months i was not active in that group at all i didn't have a way to be um my computer here at home is really really slow typically and I have a really hard time doing many things online I've since remedied that and I am now available to be more active in the group and I'm so excited I have a few things going on there right now so of course I have a sock knit along it's a year long one and um, I encourage you guys to post in there I'm gonna be drawing probably next podcast for a winner I told you I was going through my stash and I have pulled out some prizes and I'm really excited to get them off in the mail to some potential winners. The other thing that I have going on it, that will end um, the last day of August, probably won't get closed until September 1st, is I do have a washcloth along. There are not that many people who have posted in there, but I did get two skeins of Cascade um, cotton. So they are beautiful. There is a teal and a white. And so I will be shipping out prizes to two separate winners. So all you have to do is be working on washcloths all summer long. And if you finished any, then post them in that thread and you will be eligible. Like I said, I'm going to close that thread most likely September 1st. But if I do get to it um, by midnight or 10 o'clock at night or something like that the day before, it, it officially ends the last day of August. But if I forget, you might have a couple extra hours. Just maybe not though. So that's going on. I also um, have decided that I wanted to start a thread for sweaters. I am so in tune with sweaters right now. That's all I wanna knit is sweaters and socks. I thought, you know, I need to start a thread for that. You don't have to knit the same sweaters I'm knitting. You don't have to use Graceland wool yarn. All you have to do is be working on a sweater. I don't care if it's a whip. I don't care if it's almost all the way done. I don't even care if it's in the planning stages. I think that sometimes it's fun to just have a place inside of each of the groups to cheer each other along, share ideas, show your progress. So I encourage you to go hop on over there and do that. I will be offering a prize um, potentially for this thread. I don't know how that's gonna work yet. I haven't ironed out all of the details. I haven't even ironed out a date that it would end. I'm thinking the end of November. Like it would be a September, October, November, fall sweater knit along. And the best part is, is if you are already knitting a sweater for Rhinebeck or anything like that, then you can pop on over and post it there. So easy peasy, right? 
I think that sounds like lots and lots of fun. I have some other things that I am uh, thinking about doing too, and I wanted to know what your input was as well. I was thinking of doing a themed knit along for September, October, November, and December. Each month, a different theme. And um, I have a lot of different themes running around in my head and yarn that I want to dye up to go with it. So I already have September and October ironed out. And I also have um, already purchased some stitch markers because I'm going to coordinate the shop with these things as well, but some stitch markers to go in some fun kits um, for October, but for September, and you will see a shop update going up next week, um, probably next Sunday, is going to be themed around cats. I've kind of acquired a brand new kitty cat, and my Caitlin Grace loves cats, and so I have been pulling out patterns that have cats. There are these kitty cat socks that are just to die for. There's this kitty cat back, uh, bookmark that I found that I want to work on. And so basically the idea for September, in addition to the socks, in addition to the sweaters, is I'm going to put up a thread. And as long as it is kitty or cat related, it can be entered. If it's a pattern that has cat color, like color work cats on it, perfect. If it has the shape of a cat, if it's a stuffy or this kitty cat bookmark, it can be entered. If the yarn, if the name of the yarn is um, the colorway name has to do with cats, it can work. If the dyer's name, um, shop name, has something to do with cats, it works. So like cat sandwich fibers, totally works. Um, cat, uh, cat Stripe Studios totally works. So there are so many different ways that you can run with this. I think it'll be so much fun, but I'm going to be taking each month. Um, September will be kind of Caitlin's month. I want to get her stuff out of the way for Christmas, and that is my theme I'm running with October. Um, I'm running with a different theme and I'm not going to share too much about that one yet, but I will tell you it is magical. So anyways, I want to thank you guys all for hanging out with me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I know that my podcast episodes have been a little scattered and things have been crazy. Life is crazy. Summer is nuts. Um, and if you are a brand new viewer, thank you for checking me out. I know I mentioned in the beginning that there are 9 million different podcasters out there. So thank you for taking two seconds of your time to hang out with me, or I guess 40 minutes today, um, if you made it to the end, but I can't wait to chat with you guys again. If you like this episode, it's really awesome. If you give it a like <laughs> thumbs up, um, that lets other podcast viewers who are looking for other podcasts, maybe be able to find me better. Um, in addition to that, sharing it works great too. So if you would like to share my podcast, I would absolutely love that. I am over um, a thousand subscribers, but I'm going to be doing a huge giveaway when I get to 1500. And I'm kind of excited about that. I've been pulling some skeins of yarn and um, collecting some needles and a few notions pouches and it's gonna be big because it's a big deal to me you guys are amazing and you y'all are just kind of my rock a lot of times so anyways pop on over to the Ravelry group uh, you should be able to find it by searching either hello grace podcast or uh, Graceland wool yarn either should pop up um, Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to chat with you again sooner than three weeks. Um, probably not next weekend, but probably the weekend after. Um, so, anyways, bye-bye.